Namaste, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Hindu Forum Canada, I thank you all to attending this event. So, ladies and gentlemen, today we are celebrating the life and work of Tariq Farah. So, I would request Swamiji to say a few words. I would request everyone to please kindly say a little prayer with me and observe silence for one minute in the memory of this legend who has left a legacy behind him. We'll say Shanti part and observe silence for one minute and then I'll speak something about him in his life. Vishwani Deva Savitura Duritani Parasuva Yadabhatram Tanaya Suva Om Sarave Bhavantu Sukhina Sarave Santu Niramaya Sarave Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kashchid Dukha Bhagavi Om Dyalho Shanti Rantarikshagum Shanti Hiprithavi Shanti Rapaha Shanti Rokhadayaha Shanti Vanaspatayaha Shanti Revishvedeva Shanti Brahma Shanti Sarvagon Shanti Shanti Deva Shanti Sama Shanti Dedhi Om Shanti 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 So Shanti Rabhavatu Sarvarishta Shanti Bhavatu We'll all observe silence for one minute with Omkar and we'll end the silence with Omkar. Please say a prayer inside of your heart for the soul, the most pious soul to rest in peace. Thank you so very much. हम आज एक ऐसे व्यक्ति की पुनीत स्मृति में यहाँ एकत्र हुए हैं, जिस व्यक्ति की जीवन एक क्रांति रही, बोर्न मुस्लिम, पाकिस्तानी नेशनल, but carried immense feelings for India. In Dutva, and also maintaining his free will in this free world. मुझे उस महान शख्सियत, हमारे बहुत आदरणीय दिवंगत तारिक फतह साहब के लिए एक शेर याद आता है। इबादत की रस्मों को ये जमाने वाले क्या जाने? इबादत की रस्मों को ये जमाने वाले क्या जाने इबादत के आयाम ये जमाने वाले क्या जाने इबादत की रस्मों को ये जमाने वाले क्या जाने इबादत के आयाम ये जमाने वाले क्या जाने होती है कितनी तकलीफ कब्र के नीचे 
होती है कितनी तकलीफ कब्र के नीचे ये ऊपर से फूल चढ़ाने वाले क्या जाने जिस इंसान ने अपनी सारी जिंदगी में सत्य बोलने के लिए सत्य की रक्षा के लिए वेद का आदेश है सत्यम वध धर्मम चर वेद कहता है किसी भी परिस्थिति से भयभीत हुए बिना आप सत्य के पोषक बनिए आप सत्य बोलिए आप धर्म का आचरण कीजिए और यदि किसी पंजाबी शायर के शब्द मुझे याद आते हैं मेरे बहुत आदरणीय ताहिर गुरा साहब मेरे साथ मौजूद हैं हमारी बहुत गहरी वार्तालाप हो चुकी है और आगामी भी होगी क्यों रब रब कर दे लोग सीने विच नफरत वस दी क्यों रब रब कर दे लोग सीने विच नफरत वस दी है साडे ज्योने देने ढंग ऐसे जिंदगी साडे ते हस दी क्यों रब रब कर दे लोग सीने विच नफरत वस दी है साडे ज्योने देने ढंग ऐसे जिंदगी साडे ते हस दी है सिर झुकदा सिर्फ दिखावे लिए उंज रखते ने गुरूर बड़े ऐ खुदा तेरी दुनिया दे वखरे ने हुन दस्तूर बड़े सच्चेआणो कोई पूछदा नहीं झूठे हो गए ने मशहूर बड़े इस संसार से मनुष्य क्या लेकर आया था और क्या लेकर जाएगा जीवन की वास्तविकता यदि किसी ने सत्य बोलने से ही गुरेज कर लिया सत्य बोलने से ही परहेज कर लिया सत्य से ही विमुख हो गया उन्मुख हो गया शायद ऐसा व्यक्ति तो जीते जी हुए भी मरुहों के समान और मैं कहना चाहूंगा हमारे आदरणीय तारक फतह साहब के लिए वो मरकर भी जिंदा रहेंगे क्योंकि उन्होंने सबसे बड़ा सच बोला उस आत्मा को मिटाना उसकी अमर सत्ता का परिचायक व्यक्ति उस उसकी अमर सत्ता का ज्ञाता व्यक्ति हमारी संस्कृति में मरता नहीं अमर हो जाता मुझे गर्व होता है जिस व्यक्ति में सत्य इस तर तक बोलने की हिम्मत थी जहां परवाह नहीं थी कौन विरोधी बनता है जहां परवाह नहीं थी कौन आपका शत्रु बन के आपके जीवन को निर्मूल करने की चेष्टा करता है शायद परवाह एक थी सत्य जगत तक पहुंचे और उस सत्य को बोलने वाले इतिहास में क्रूसीफाई किए गए इतिहास में सत्य बोलने वाले मंसूर का क्या हाल किया गया शायद आप जानते होंगे जहां इतिहास इतनी बड़ी बड़ी गवाहियां दे रहा था वहां पर फिर से कोई सत्य बोलने की जरूरत करे फिर से कोई सत्य का समर्थक बनने का साहस करे महाराज ऐसा नहीं सत्य मुझे नहीं पता या आपको नहीं पता नहीं पता हम सब सच जानते बोल पाते क्यों नहीं बोल पाते क्योंकि अंदर की एक डर की कणी का अंदर का भय अपने जीवन की अपनी आत्म सुरक्षा हमें चुप होने पर मजबूर कर देती भगवान ने अर्जुन को कहा था अर्जुन क्लैबियम मास का महापार्थ नहीं तत्तव्य पपद्य थे श्रुद्र हृदय दौर बल्यम त्यक्तवो तिष्ठ परंत अर्जुन युद्ध के समय तू क्लीव हो गया है तेरे में ऐसी क्लीवता और नपुंसकता नहीं भपती उठ उतिष्ठत जागृत प्राप्य वरान्य बोधत शुरस्य धारा निशिता दुरत्या दुर्गम पथस्थ कवयो वदंती उठो जागो और अपने लक्ष्य को प्राप्त करो और ये शरीर आज नहीं कल मरने ही वाला है इसको बचा कौन पाया है अंतवंत इमे देह नित्य सोक्त शरीर न अनाशिनो अप्रमेय तस्मा युद्ध स्वभारत सत्य के लिए है अर्जुन खड़ा हो आज ये जानकर कि ये मेरे मामे हैं ये मेरे ताए हैं ये मेरे भीष्म पितामह हैं ये मेरे गुरु द्रोण हैं और मैं इनके प्रति युद्ध की धारणा नहीं रख सकता ऐसी क्लीवता और नपुंसकता लाने पर इतिहास तुझे हमेशा कायरों की श्रेणी में करेगा
तो कभी भी वीरों की श्रेणी में नहीं गिरा जाए मरना तो है इस संसार में अमर कोई नहीं आप अमर हैं मैं अमर हूं हम सब आज नहीं तो कल मृत्यु के ग्रास बनने वाले लेकिन जिसने आत्मा की अमर सत्ता को जानकर न परवाह करके कोई क्या सोचता है और कल मिटाना था आज मिटा दे सौ वर्ष का भी जीना किसी बड़े गंभीर शायर ने लिखा था सौ वर्ष का भी जीना किसी काम का नहीं दो पल ही जिया होता लेकिन सत्य कहा होता दो पल ही जिंदगी जीते लेकिन सच बोलकर जीते सच्ची और सुच्ची जिंदगी जीते और मैं समझता हूं तारक फतेह साहब जिन्होंने एक सच्ची सुच्ची जिंदगी जी सत्य को विश्व के सन्मुख रखा परवाह नहीं की भारतीयता तो सब धर्मों का मूल है भारतीयता तो सब धर्मों का आधार है वैदिक सनातन संस्कृति वैश्विक संस्कृति मुझे वो काल याद आता है जब विवेकानंद शिकागो की वर्ल्ड रिलीजियस कॉन्फ्रेंस में गए और वहां जहां सब धर्मों के सदग्रंथ रखे गए थे स्वामी विवेकानंद की बोलने की बारी आई सबके धर्म ग्रंथ टेबल पर पड़े सबसे नीचे सब धर्म ग्रंथों के सबसे नीचे भगवत गीता पड़ी थी विवेकानंद खड़े होकर उठे और कहने लगे मैं एक ही बात कहना चाहता हूं एक काम करो नीचे से गीता को खींच लो नीचे से भगवत गीता को खींच लो ये सारे ग्रंथ धराशाई हो जाएंगे विवेकानंद जी ने वो अलग जगाई और परमात्मा ने मुझे उसी अमेरिका में काम करने का सौसर दिया बंधुओं उनका जीवन इतिहास बन जाता है जो सत्य के लिए खड़े होते मैं बहुत बहुत प्रणाम करना चाहूंगा उस पुनीत देह को उस पुनीत आत्मा को जो देह रूप में भी और आत्मा के रूप में भी और ऐसे लोग हमारा शास्त्र कहता है ऐसी आत्माएं वे भले ही शरीर में ना रहें उनका यशह शरीर हमेशा जीवित रहता जो आप अपने कर्मों की साख इस संसार में बनाकर जाते जो आप उत्तम उत्तम कर्मों का बीज इस संसार में बोकर जाते वो आपके यशह शरीर में आने वाली रहती सृष्टि तक स्मरण किया जाता है और ऐसे ही मैं आज इस मंच से एक सनातनी वैश्विक सनातन संस्कृति का साधु होने के नाते सन्यासी होने के नाते तारिक फतह साहब को अमर करार देता हूं जिन्होंने अपनी विचारधारा से एक ऐसा बीज डाल दिया है जो रहती हुई सृष्टि तक उन मॉडस्ट सोचने वाले लोगों के लिए एक उत्तम सोच बन जाएगी और इस संसार को फिर से संग्रहित करने का कार्य करेगी यूनिफिकेशन इस संसार के लिए बहुत जरूरी है और यदि कोई जिसको हम गैर धर्मी कह देते हैं और वो शायद गैर धर्मी अपने धर्म वालों से ज्यादा हमारे धर्म का पोषक था मुझे इस बात को कहने में कोई संदेह नहीं क्योंकि इंसानियत थी मैं भी अपने कंडोलेंसेस मेरी बहन नताशा फतेह जी के साथ सांझी कर रहा था और एक ऐसा उत्तम बीज उस फल से निकला उस पेड़ से एक ऐसा उत्तम बीज मुझे तो नहीं लगता कि उनकी विचारधारा भी फतह साहब से कम है और आखिर में अपने कंडोलेंसेस अपनी श्रद्धांजलि और अपनी पूर्ण 
आदर सहित भावांजलि फतेह साहब को प्रेषित करते हुए एक परिप्रेक्ष्य जो मैं मेरी बहन नताशा जी के साथ साझा कर रहा था आपको भी जरूर कहूं आप एक मंदिर बनाते तो वहां मुस्लिम नहीं आते ईसाई नहीं आते सिख नहीं आते आप एक गुरुद्वारा बना देते हैं तो हिंदू नहीं जाते मुस्लिम नहीं जाते ईसाई नहीं जाते आप एक गिरिजा घर बना देते हैं तो हिंदू नहीं जाते मुसलमान नहीं जाते सिख नहीं जाते आप एक होटल बना देते हैं वहां सारे आ जाते हैं आते हैं कि नहीं आते यहां आने से पहले सोचते हैं कि हमें वहां नहीं जाना ये हमारा फेथ नहीं है ये हमारा रिलीजन नहीं तो मैं ये कहूं कि एक होटल मंदिर गुरुद्वारे मस्जिद गिरिजाघर से बड़ा है जिसने चारों धर्मों के लोग एक छत के नीचे एकत्र कर लिए लेकिन एक धर्म के लोग बाकी तीन जगहों पर जाने से इनकार करते धर्म और मजहब के नाम पर इस धरती का विभाजन बंद कर दीजिए धर्म और मजहब के नाम पर इंसानियत के बंटवारे मत कीजिए जहां रिलीजियस टॉलरेंस नहीं होगी जहां एक दूसरे के फेथ के प्रति आदर नहीं होगा वी लिव इन अ वर्ल्ड वेयर फ्री विल इज रिस्पेक्टेड डोंट वी आई माइ सेल्फ रीड गुरबानी फॉर द पास्ट ट्वेंटी नाइन ईयर्स स्टूडेंट ऑफ कंपेरेटिव स्टडीज बिटवीन भगवद गीता एंड गुरु ग्रंथ साहेब and i have been facing certain issues because i want to unite and i can feel the agony and pain that ek fatah sahab would have felt in his heart to do so in uniting this world beyond religion on the true truest most spiritual legacy is to become a human a true human that human can change the world bring peace establish peace and i will call him a true ambassador to relay this message to this world where hatred is dwelling where jealousy is dwelling where religious intolerance is dwelling he was one ambassador who could have established peace and his thoughts will never die they will be carried forward they will be there are people like my very revered rao saab my very revered tahir gora saab indeed is one of the most wonderful souls i've ever met in my lifetime and a very very clear person in his thoughts as a crystal clear approach to what he does and what he says and i really admire aur ye aaj ek prarthana karunga इस पुनीत श्रद्धांजलि में भावांजलि में आइए हम सब एक अच्छे इंसान बने इंसानियत को एक नया दर्जा दें कुछ जाता पाता वंड छे मैं आखिरी पंक्तियों से अपनी वाणी को विराम दूंगा कुछ जाता पाता वंड छे जड़े बचे हो वंड दिते तरमाने कुछ जाता पाता वंड छे जड़े बचे हो वंड दिते तरमाने सब जान दया भी भुल बैठे तुर नाल जाना बस करमाने आपका धर्म आपके साथ नहीं जाता आपके कर्म आपके साथ जाते सब जान दया भी भुल बैठे तुर नाल जाना बस करमाने हैरान हा मैं कुछ तू भी दस इस दुनिया विच ने क्यों फतूर बड़े ए खुदा तेरी दुनिया दे वखरे ने हुन दस्तूर बड़े इन दस्तूरों को बदलने वाला एक संदेश वाहक आया था आया था शरीर से गया है विचारों में जिंदा रहेगा और वो है तारिक फतेह बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद प्रेषित करते हुए मैं बहुत आभार अभिव्यक्त करना चाहूंगा मेरे बहुत आदरणीय रावस यंदमुरी साहब का वो 
in a very short span of meeting, decided me to come and speak a few words and pay my homages to this legendary soul. And I also, again, very deeply condole to the family, those who have been going through this or kisi Muslim ke liye, Muslim faith ke liye apni will mein likhna ki unki cremation ho mein se bohat badi karanti maangta ki bohat bada ek jazba tha aur un sab logon ko ek sandesh tha batware mat karo apne mool ko pehchano aur jinnon ne apna mool pehchan kar ek sandesh diya wo cremation koi आप ये मत समझिएगा कि कोई केवल धार्मिक भावना थी एक बहुत बड़ा इस विश्व को संदेश था सनातन संस्कृति ही हमारा मूल है थी और समूचे धर्मों का रहेगी उस संदेश को पुनः पुनः नमन करते हुए आप सब यहां आए हुए धनमान्य बंधुओं सब माताओं को बहनों को मेरे भाइयों को आप सब के अंदर मैं अपने परमात्मा को विराजमान जान आपको प्रणाम करता हूं मेरे प्रणाम स्वीकार कीजिएगा ईश्वर आप सबको आत्मिक बल दे आप उस व्यक्ति की सभा में आए हैं जिसने सच बोला और आप भी उसी सच की डगर पे चल के सच को उजागर कर सकें ये सभा आपको ऐसा आत्मबल दे इसी प्रार्थना सहित मैं अपनी वाणी को विराम दूंगा हरिओम तत्सत हरिओम तत्सत थैंक यू स्वामी जी आपने बड़ी दिल की बातें की <clears throat> आपने मेरा भी दिल भर दिया बहुत सारे चेहरे हैं मैं धीरे धीरे उनको रिकग्नाइज करूंगा टू ऑफ द फ्रेंड्स तारिक फतेह फ्रेंड्स हु स्पेंड लास्ट कपल ऑफ इयर्स विद तारिक ड्यूरिंग पेंडेमिक दे आर हेयर आमिर शहजाद एंड इंतजार जैदी Thank you, Intazar Zaidi. Thank you, Amir Shahzad. And Aftab is not here. Aftab Chaudhary was also one of those. They spent five, six years, almost, you know, twelve hours a day. I wouldn't say twenty-four. <laughs> twelve hours a day, and uh, they gave Tariq uh, so uh, good company. Also, I would like to recognize the Benjamin Dictor. He's sitting. down there and benjamin always had a wonderful wonderful uh, talk with him and uh, john godard thank you for joining us john actually probably once joined tarik in india and uh, john happened to work for toronto star is a very seasoned journalist thank you thank you john uh, i'll recognize few more uh, faces uh, as our proceeding will go further i would request our president hindu forum canada's president rao yandamuri ji to say few words rao yandamuri namaskar everyone thank you very much for coming it's a short notice mr tarik patel was a fearless warrior he is a brave lion of bharat mein his legacy will continue and will carry on his sort i can say Thank you very much. Tariq Fatah and Balochistan. Those are very important ties. I would request Zafar Baloch, President Baloch Human Rights Council of Canada, to say a few words. Dr. Zafar Baloch. all of our friends comrades activists who joined tarik fata on the streets of toronto to raise voice for the oppressed for balochistan for kurdistan for every oppressed nation for every oppressed human being on earth those are his legacies and they will be cherished they will be continued this is my promise 
to all of you here that Tarek's legacy will remain alive, not only here in Canada, where he struggled and lived for so many years, but also he will be remembered as a Sarmachar, the freedom fighter for independent Balochistan. The word Sarmachar in Baluchi means freedom fighter. And it also means the one who does not care for his head. This is a fearless warrior, like one of our colleagues said over here. That's the soul and the spirit of Tariq Fatah, who will be always remembered. I want to say so much more. I have so much to share with every one of you here, but I would like to be here mostly listening to Natasha Fatah. That was my prime reason to come here and meet her and listen to what she has to say about a great man, a legend, a restless soul. He was so many things in his life, but the most cherished point, the most cherished existence that I admired of Tariq Fatah was being simply a human being. That was his foundation. He did not believe in any religion. He did not believe in any creed. He had no ambition for any material needs. He was the seeker of truth, and he will be remembered as such. With these words, I would like to say, long live Tariq Fatah in our hearts. Long live free and independent Balochistan. Long live free, independent Kurdistan. And thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Zafar Baloch. I have a few more uh, friends uh, who hopefully uh, would say a few words. Benjamin Dictor is one of those. Benjamin, would you like to say a few words? Please come and join. You know, when I first met Tarek several years ago, he had a certain charm about him that I wrote about recently, was he loved to argue. And I love to argue. And the very first time we sat down together, we were fighting with each other. It was brilliant. But he's open to different ideas. And he had courage, courage that most of us don't have. And that's why he's so important. Most of us go through our lives dealing with our families, our responsibilities, our work, you name it. But we don't have the time to invest in the things that we think are important. But it's leaders like Tarek who had the courage to speak up for so many of us, even when we disagreed. And you know what? When he disagreed with you, he would still speak up for your right to be heard. That's why he was so vital. He's going to have a long-term legacy. I think he's one of those people that in his passing will move on, but a few years into the future, people will realize that their vacuum has been created by his absence. And that's when we'll start to celebrate and look back at the legacy of what Tarek did to contribute to journalism, to activism across the globe. And I hope my good friend here will have a prominent role in the biography on Tarek's life. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I just want to thank all of you, everyone who organized this event, those of you who have come in the middle of the week on this bad weather day to mark my dad's passing in some capacity. It's, it's really tough being short uh, most of the time. So look, I'm not as eloquent or as brilliant or as wise as some of the other speakers. I'm just a simple Canadian. Um, so I'll talk about the most Canadian thing, which is the weather. And not necessarily about today's weather, but I want you guys to go back to a week ago, April 24th. 
And prior to April 24th, we had this beautiful stretch of weather in Toronto where it was so warm and the sun was beaming and we thought, oh God, we can put our winter clothes away. But of course, that went away on April 24th, the day my dad died. Because on that day, those of us who were at the hospital in the middle of the night and progressed through the course of the day, we saw a snowstorm, we saw rain, we saw hail, we saw the sun burst through, we saw a rainbow, and then we saw the cycle repeat. And I have never in my life seen a day with weather like that. And to me, if that wasn't the epitome of my dad moving through the heavens, fighting with everyone along the way, and causing a storm everywhere he went, then I don't know what else there is. And then on the day we cremated him, we carried out his final wishes. It was so beautiful. The sun was back out. All of us were at dad's home in downtown Toronto in this neighborhood called Cabbage Town, which he loved and adored. And all of us sat outside. We took various groups of us to sit outside in the sun. And I thought he was so stormy when he was leaving. And he's so happy. And the universe is so bright because his, his wish was fulfilled. I need to make clear that while my father and I shared many of the same beliefs, he was a political activist. He had, he had a mission, a political mission, a humanitarian one, a deep, deep sense of wisdom and a direction he wanted people to move in or he would hope that they would move in. I'm just a simple reporter and I ask questions and I, at the very least, I try to offer clarity where there is confusion. So I'll try to offer some clarity at this time of confusion. That what do we do without someone like Tariq Fatah? Because most of you who are here tonight likely have become familiar with him in the past decade. But you know, I've known him for 40 plus years. And Tariq Fatah is so much more than his political beliefs. While he is one of the proudest sons of India, Hindustan, Bharat, he is every cause was his cause. I, there was I think my first word was Balochistan because it was talked about so often in our home. We talked about Kurdistan. We talked about South Africa at the time of apartheid. We have always talked about a free and secular Iran where women can wear whatever the hell they want. And nobody is going to beat them to death in a jail for it. There will be no more Masa Aminis in Tariq Fatah's world. But that is the political stand. He was a labor activist. He always believed in the distribution of wealth. That no CEO should make 10 times more, 100 times more than what the lowest paid worker works, makes in the course of a day. But that is my father. Politically, I'll tell you about who he is as a human being. He is the sweetest, funniest, most aggravating, most difficult, most hilarious, most brilliant, most generous person you'll ever meet. I was saying they found this picture of dad, and I don't think of dad in a suit, right? Dad always wore sh cargo shorts and a Hawaiian shirt at home. And, but what that picture does have is the twinkle in his eye. That sense of mischief, what our brother said that even when he was fighting with you, he was having a good time. He was having a good time. And then people would say like, why does he fight so much? Because it's fun. Because it's, it makes you better. May the best argument win. And he never held a grudge. And even at the end, those who had hurt him and betrayed him and sabotaged him along the way, he forgave them all. And he was calling them to say, I love you from the hospital bed in a tremendous pain, he was calling his so-called enemies to say, I forgive you. So that is what we can carry on because sometimes these notions of these large things about being a humanitarian and being a brave journalist and being a truth speaker and seeker seem so big. What can each of us do as small little human beings, small grains of sand in the universe? What we can do is be sweet to each other. Be kind to each other. Give without expectation of return. Always speak the truth. Always, always speak the truth, even if it hurts. And maybe especially if it hurts. 
Because that is the truth that needs to be spoken. And as, as Abandaji said, he said it in beautiful Hindi that I cannot repeat, but he said, so many of us are scared. We're so scared. I'm scared. My job is to tell the truth and sometimes I get scared. But dad was fearless. So if you can adopt a degree of fearlessness in your actions, it, you know, I, I spoke with the Pandaji in the back and I told him that dad's last wish was to be cremated. Not necessarily as an act of religiosity, but this is our ancestral heritage. We, I, I try to explain it to people that if you, especially those of us who are Canadians, Everyone here is living in this country. We so often acknowledge the sacrifice of our indigenous populations, the First Nations, the Inuit, the Métis of this country. We recognize who they are, that this is their land, and we happen to be here. We are lucky and fortunate to be here. They might have been forced to convert to Catholicism. They might be forced to speak in English, but they know their indigenous identity. That doesn't mean they're not going to speak in English and participate in what is now mainstream Canada. But the same goes for us from Hindustan, that I may continue to be a Muslim, but that doesn't change my indigenous identity as an Indian person. And and you know, I told the Pandaji, it drives me nuts. Every Pakistani person I grew up with said, we're actually from Turkey. <laughs> we're actually from Iran. Our ancestors are Central Asian. Baloney, you all know you're from Hyderabad. You all know you're from Bombay. So why, what, what are you trying to prove? You want to deny your, your link to the Indus Valley civilization, to the first known script in humanity, the first languages ever documented in the world come from the south in India? You don't want to be linked to that? We, we must be proud. That doesn't mean arrogant. That doesn't mean arrogant. That doesn't mean we're better than anybody. But we know who we are and we know what we've contributed as a people, as a civilization, as a billion of us together in this tapestry together, from the far north to the south, the east and west, and that also includes Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Nepal, all of these countries, we are one people. I know I'm going on and on, and Pandaji really needs to get going, because we've got other stuff to do, but beyond our oneness as Desi people, we are one as humanity. And that, above all else, my dad believed in. I want to point out, he'll kill me, but my friend Steve Niles, who's sitting in the corner, there, thank you, Steve, for coming. And the reason why I'm pointing out Steve is, <laughs> Steve probably didn't understand 90% of the speeches. More, yep. And he is not a Muslim or a Hindu. Has His connection to India is me, I think, right? And, but we have a deep friendship that goes beyond, and, and on paper, we should not be friends. He's a white guy who likes to gamble and play sports. I don't, and I'm not, <laughs> but we are so close, and he has been such a good friend to me, and in this moment where he has nothing to gain from being here, and I would certainly understand if he wasn't here, he came for me, because the humanity is what binds us. You and me are linked, just like everyone in this room is linked, just like everyone on this earth is linked together. We are one. We are one thing. And your presence here exemplifies that. Thank you. I've got a lot more to say, but maybe I should. I'll wrap it up. And then if you've got questions, I'll answer, try my best to answer your questions. Thank you so much. Namaste. Dr. Ranveed Sharda, no Tarek Ji for a long, long time. After listening, everyone, and especially Natasha, there is nothing else for me to say. I met him 25 years back, and I found him one of the finest human being, humble personality, down to earth, and very lovable. That's 25 years back. 
But when he went to India, came back, he fell in love. He was earlier also considered himself as an Indian. I think his forefathers came from Rajasthan, as far as I know. As far as I know, what he told me. But you won't find a person of that status to be so lovely, so humble, that every time you would love to meet him. I just say, I told Tahir, I said, listen, we have to celebrate his achievements. Everyone has to go. But the achievements will always remain there. Me and Dr. Tahir Gora, we did one function, one TV program also for half an hour. But he will be remembered as far as I think humanity is there. So let's celebrate his achievements. Forget he has gone. He is always there. He will remain there. And Natasha, we all are there till we are. For you, anything ever you need, we are there. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sharda. Two more uh, fellows. I will ask them to say a few words and then we'll go back to Natasha. John Goddard, would you like to say a few words, please? A few years ago, I'm a journalist and, uh, and a writer, and a few years ago I was researching William Lyon Mackenzie. He was the first mayor of Toronto and uh, led a rebellion in 18, 1837. So he was an insider as a mayor, and then he was a, a rebel against the government. So um, I was reading these bi biographies, and the biographers were very confused about him. They couldn't quite figure him out. He, um, he was very knowledgeable. He'd get newspapers sent to him from England, and nobody else wa uh, w w would get these. So he had information that nobody else had, like a, like a big kind of internet of, his t of its time. And he had very good recall. He was a very smart guy. Um, but he was not ideological. He didn't follow any particular... Um, every, every issue that came up, he judged it on its own merits and made a decision. And sometimes he was against some people, and other times he was, he was in favor of the same people. And, and the biographers are very confused trying to figure this out. They had never met, they couldn't compare him to anybody. And I was really trying to figure him out too. And then I realized I know somebody, somebody exactly like that, Tarek Fata. Uh, and people had the same kind of confusion about him, that he wasn't, that he wasn't uh, you know, he might be fighting with, not fighting, but uh, having disagreements with somebody one day and uh, be very much in accord with the same person the next day. Um, so really, Tarek Fata um, helped me understand William Lyon McKenzie. And one day, I told him about this once, and uh, he was living very close to uh, William Lyon McKenzie's grave. So we walked over together, and I took pictures of, and he took pictures of me <laughs> at the graveside too, at the, uh, the big monument. Um, Tarek Fata was a rebel in the tradition of William Lyon Mackenzie to me, both Torontonians. Uh, Ravi Hudaji is our community leader. He likes to say a few words, and then in the end, I will ask Satish Ji. Ravi Huda, please. Those who know Tarek Fata Ji, he would have been smiling from heavens and seeing all the familiar faces here and would have remarked something in Punjabi, which I cannot reproduce here. Most of you know. That if you are standing in the middle of the world, then the world's problems will be solved. The world's problems would be solved if these many people who are attending here would really stand up and do something. So, Tariq Fateh Ji's, uh, those who knew him, he looked beyond his own background, his own experiences, was willing to accept what was right. There's a Sanskrit saying say, which says, I am Nijah Paro Veti Ganana Lagu Chetasam 
udar charita naam tu vasudeva kutumbakam which means people with small minds and hearts always differentiate between people saying this is mine this is not mine and that is others but one with large hearts accept the whole world as one family so though i had this long speech about him i would rest my words by saying that a true tribute to tarik fateh ji would be to be like him fearless and speak the truth dhanyawad namaste as i mentioned earlier uh, we are very grateful for a very important letter released by canada india foundation i request satesh thakur ji to say a few words it is on one way very sad that a person we admired a lot you all are here to pay we all are here to pay tribute to tarik fateh ji at canada india foundation level and in my interaction we had in one of the event we hosted and in that interaction what we felt was a true fearless spirit which is infectious you sat with him for few minutes and you feel empowered the kind of power you get through him that we felt it as we all know that is the thoughts is the work which will remain forever and will keep inspiring many many of us that whatever work he was doing that how important it is he transcended religion faith to come to the level of humanity and that humanity is the i think base of all the religion and all the if we are not a human first it does not does not matter which religion or caste or faith we belong to and i think he symbolized that humanity which is the most important that if we imbibe that values there would be no fight so i want to thank tarik fateh sahab dal sahab and in particularly natasha ji thank you thank you so very much for your very inspiring words we heard from uh, pandit ji also so whatever way we can help support we are always there for you we are part of the family and keep up the good work and we need people like tarik fateh sahab who can connect and bridge that gap what has the gap which has divided us we need people like him and from that spark i hope that it will turn into a big fire to basically bring people together so thank you so very much and once again our heartfelt heartfelt condolences namaste everyone and ladies and gentlemen good evening this was not planned it's just totally out of emotions that i say this i couldn't stop myself coming up here to say that it's always been on my bucket list to meet the legendary tarik fateh ji it couldn't come to a fruition but i have to ask you respectfully natasha ji what do i do now because i used to wake up every morning i can say i used to get up every morning but i only woke up with his tweets that was my caffeine now i just get up i don't wake up twitter has lost its charm and i just always asked myself 
What does a person do whose passion is just so controversial and he keeps chasing his passion? We all grow up being taught to stay out of problems, to stay out of trouble. I tell my daughter, stay out of trouble, stay out of controversies, don't go there. But this legend chased controversy, like everyone said, he didn't care about his head. We're all so obsessed with our heads, and our heads become so big they don't fit the room. Where did he come from? Where did he go? He will never go anywhere. We have to all emulate him, imbibe everything that he was. And I'm just blabbering here because I think I'm going to cry. And I think I will meet him up there one day and I'll say, sir, I'm going to do my little bit to carry on your legacy. And I know I'm taking a lot more time than was planned. But I'm a Canadian born of Indian origin. And like Natasha Ji said, and like Tariq Ji and Tahir Ji, for everything we stand, we don't disconnect ourselves from such proud roots. And I'm going to wrap it up here and say, I feel so deeply for your whole family, Natasha Ji, for all of us in the audience, and for myself. I don't know how I can express my condolences when I think I need some myself. But I will continue to get up, and I'll have to look at him to wake up. And I think he's waking up a lot of us, and he's passed the beaten on, and we have to keep that torch going. And we'll do our best to keep that going. We won't let him down. Thank you, everyone. Namaste. Vanita, I'm so glad you came up. Because you know what my dad would say if he was here and we left, went home together? The whole drive home, he'd be saying, no women spoke? Just you? He'd be so annoyed that... Because my, my father and my mother were both the first feminists I ever met. And my father was a feminist. So he would be so happy that you had the courage to say, I have something to say. So that's how you go on. Your question was, how do we go on? You know, I, I, I don't have the wisdom of any of the scholars in this room, but I do know that that is how my dad would want you to go on. You took the mic and that's all that matters. And you spoke the truth. Thank you for that. Ji. Yes, Rakesh. Thank you so much, uh, Natasha Ji, and all those people who spoke. Uh, I do have my stories too to share, but here I'm here. I'm here to ask a question, uh, a few questions. Uh, but I do want to share a few things. Uh, meeting with uh, Tariq Fateh Saab, Tahir Aslam Gura Saab, they are like brothers to me, and uh, he was a mentor. Uh, in 2019, I have started a Ham Hindustani WhatsApp group and we had a program and where Tariq Bhai and Tahir Bhai, they both spoke and we talked about the, what is Hindustan, what is Bharat and what is the two identity, bringing togetherness. Uh, he always spoke about and he never gave a damn what people think it like or they don't like. Mm -hmm. And he spoke the truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, he was not a, in that way to please you. If you like it, you don't like it. He came on radio. He came on TV programs everywhere. So this fearlessness, he had it. And he spoke and in his thousands and thousands of, uh, I will say, uh, not I will say words, I will say, I do not know how to count how many interviews he has given uh, to the media in India and everywhere. But millions of people were followers and he was so good on technology as well. Yes. He taught me like, you know, how to turn it off, how to go on. I miss, I was having, I was driving him actually when we came. I pick him, picked him up from Toronto and we came. So I had a wonderful time taking him and coming back. My question is this, all those people, miss, uh, we have on Hindi Times Media, we, uh, uh, you know, uh, we did the tribute to him. We asked the people, 
people are asking who is and how his legacy is going to be carried uh, the the truth what he spoke uniting people and telling the truth so uh, some of people have suggested uh, and i'm just passing that and you can give your comment on it that why not having a some foundation some uh, some forum where tariq fatah's legacy can be continued where uh, people can donate people can come and speak about it uh, uh, so how do you plan to because you are his daughter i met you too and i am so pleased and so happy uh, as uh, uh, rao saab said as pandit ji has said uh, swami ji has said the tariq fatah did not die no tariq fatah is zindabad tariq so, fatah yeah. amar rahe that's what my first word so tariq <laughs> so how do you plan to carry his legacy oh bhai <laughs> how to answer this very complicated question it's only been a week it's only been a week and i think the sister was right in that we will we will come to know in time how great this his contribution to the world was I would absolutely what I think would be most appropriate for dad is a library a library of Islamic Indian democratic history right but I don't know and the idea of a foundation I also don't know because the great thing about dad was he didn't take a dime from anybody and he was constantly being accused of being a cia agent and an rrs agent and mossad and whoever right like oh yeah loads and loads of money always coming in sure 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 but he he was fearless in that i have nothing to hide i didn't i never compromised my principles this is him talking i never took a dime from anybody i just did what i had to do you could take it or leave it and on that point we've been talking so much about how dad didn't care that's not to say that he was insensitive My dad was a very very sensitive person and he cared deeply about people. And I promise I'll answer your question, but the people have asked me what's been the biggest surprise in this week without your dad. How many siblings I have <laughs> has been the biggest surprise because all these young people around the world and I mean around the world from the UK to South Africa to India to the United States have called me and said your dad was like a dad to me when i couldn't talk to my own family about my religion about my sexuality where i want to go to school what i want to do i don't want to live the life they've chosen for me your dad listened to me your dad gave me strength i'm comforting them <laughs> you know I, i lost my dad my best friend and i've spent so much time on the phone making other people feel better there there don't worry he's with you okay that's fine i'll do that but that's also part of his legacy. I appreciate that question. I'm sorry I don't have a more elegant answer. He must be remembered. The simplest way to remember him and keep that legacy going is to always tell the truth. Always do good whenever you have the opportunity. Always make people feel good genuinely, not for favors, but because it's the right thing to do. And to tell even the ugly truths when it's scary and you're all alone. I wish our friend Kevan was here but Kevan is an activist with the Kurdish movement. And I created a WhatsApp group of dad's closest friends, the Hibai's on that our dear friends here, dad's brothers basically are here. And in that WhatsApp group Kevan sent a picture outside of a mosque where it's dad and two other guys <laughs> protesting outside the mosque with the pictures from Charlie Hebdo. imagine how brave you have to be to protest outside the mosque three old guys on their own and one of the guys said tarik let's go there's just three of us they're going to kill us and dad said the number doesn't matter even if there's just one of us one of us is speaking the truth one of us is doing the right thing and that's all that matters so that's how you carry out his legacy give me time to figure out how to show him the respect that he deserves because i i do agree that there has to be something i don't know if it's a lecture series or the library or a foundation 
But all I know is I don't want money involved in it at all. I want it to be as pure and as decent as my dad is. That's all I know so far. Namaskar, Natasha. Namaskar. We have this teacher and pupil relationship in India, what we call the Guru Shishya Parampara. And I consider a few people in Canada, my gurus and Tariq Bhai was one of them. So that way you are my Guru, Guru Behan. And I will call you Lakshmi because that was the name which your dad gave you. Yes. So you are Lakshmi for me. <laughs> so all I can say about Tariq Bhai, a couplet in Urdu, Hazaron saal nar ki sabni benuri pe roti hai, padi mushkil se hota hai chaman mein didavar paida. If we loosely translated in English that Mother Nature cries for thousands of years for its monotony. It takes a lot of difficult situation to create a seer. And that's what I will say Tariq Bhai was. He was a seer. He was a revolutionary he named himself. And we have to basically follow his footsteps. We have to basically... He was the person who took the torch. He was a torch bearer of truth. And as a Kashmiri Pandit who has seen a lot of difficulties, we were annihilated. We were... Okay, we were basically put to genocide and Tariq Bhai was always supporting us. So I have a question for you, which is in the same league as my friend Rakesh Tiwari ji. We want to glorify his life. So I want to basically start an initiative where we can ask government of India to confer him with a civilian award. What do you have to say about it? I won't say no. <laughs> so with your permission, I'll take the initiative. Okay. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tahirbhai, can I address the, sure, the sure. name Lakshmi? I'm so glad please, please, Bhai please. Sab, that you brought that up. Go ahead. So for those who may not know, Dad has talked about it a lot on Indian TV. But what he initially wanted for his first daughter being born in Karachi, Pakistan to be named Lakshmi. Now, okay, my parents had already aggravated a lot of people because my mom is a Gujarati-speaking Shia from one of the richest families in Pakistan. And my dad is a Punjabi-speaking Sunni and was dirt poor. So already nobody wanted this marriage to happen, right? So, okay, somehow they, they did it their way and they got married. So he was defying the rules right from the beginning, as was my very brave mother. And I'm sorry that she's not here, my mom is very ill, but I do need all of you to know that if you say the name Tariq Fatah, you must also say the name Nargis Tapal. Because without my mother, my father <laughs> would be still in some gutter somewhere in Karachi. She lifted him up. So I need to pay respect to her on that front. So anyway, back to the name Lakshmi. So they wanted to name me Lakshmi. The Sunnis and the Shias both weren't having it. So, so mom and dad decided that they would name me Natasha. Natasha because it's a universal name. Every country in the world has daughters named Natasha. You can't tell if it's Muslim or Hindu or Christian. And besides they were both communists so they liked a little bit of Russian mixed into there. <laughs> you know, it was a different times, different times. Um, so I appreciate you so much calling me Lakshmi and, and to honor that my husband um, bought me a Lakshmi necklace, right? And when he gave it to me, he showed my dad that he had bought me a necklace of Lakshmi and that I could wear it because so I could still honor the name I was supposed to have. I like my name, but Lakshmi you can't beat. So thank you for bringing that up. You might be surprised that oh, I have the microphone suddenly. That's, that's the man, Steve Niles. He likes sports. <laughs> when you said white guy, I think that narrowed it down for pretty much everyone. That's true, that's true. Um, I never had the pleasure to meet your father, actually. I've, uh, I've met your mother. Everything you've said about her is true. Uh, but I never had the privilege. And all I've heard was stories and what I've read and what I've seen. So I thought I got a sense of him. And then hearing you describe him made me realize I have met him. Because I've met you, and you are your father's daughter, to a T. And that's worth a round of applause. Thank you. And I think one of the questions that's been raised tonight is how, how does one carry on? Um, how does one carry on that legacy? And in a way, it might be impossible for one person to do that. It's 
a lot. I think a lot of people are asking a lot of you, <laughs> certainly. And of course, as one of your friends, we're going to be here for you throughout this, uh, whatever you need, whenever you need it. But how does one carry on even a small part of that? And I see that in you, carrying on the sharing messages of peace and love and respect, but also integrity and honesty and fairness. And I see that in you. And I don't know anyone else here right now, but if we could all, if we could all just do a small part of that, maybe combined in our own way, whatever we're fighting for, whoever we're fighting for, whatever we're doing the right thing for, whoever that is for us, for our families, our communities, if we all just do a little bit of that combined, I think we can try, try maybe to get half, just as half as wonderful as your father is. So I don't have a question, but much love to you. And God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Steve. Thank you, Steve. And uh, here is uh, Mr. Anil Sherangi. He's our one of the uh, community leaders. Uh, he would like to ask something. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, on behalf of uh, CIGF, Canada India Global Forum, uh, please accept uh, our deepest condolences uh, to the family. We will always be there uh, whenever, however, you need any support, any help. Thank you. One question I think we all should, I mean, I would ask to everyone, and I think we all have the answers already. And that's, I think, it's his benchmark. I would say, who are you or who you are? If you have that answer, it means you are carrying Tariq Fateh's, Tariq Fateh's legacy. Because he was the only person, a brave person, who came out and million times he said that, that where he comes from, where, what are his roots? There is no Hindu, no Hindu without Sindh. Yes. I remember that. Uh, so that's a beautiful one thing if you can take it from him today, from this room. And if you continue that and practice that every day and ask yourself who you are, where you're coming from, you are carrying him in your heart. Thank you, Natasha. Love you guys. Thank you. On that point, I want to show, share an example of what made Tariq Fata great to me. So we had just moved to Canada. It, this was in like 1989. We moved to Ajax, Ontario. Both my parents have master's degrees, but they didn't have Canadian experience. So no one would hire them, right? I think we all know this drama. Okay. Can you imagine my dad, as brilliant as he was in 10 years of experience working in advertising in Saudi Arabia and all of his journalistic experience in Pakistan, but he couldn't get a job in Canada. But they were never bitter about it. So my parents bought a small house in Ajax, Ontario, and it had a renovated basement. So they thought, okay, let's rent the basement so that maybe we can get a little bit of income until we find work or figure out what to do. So it was a dark and stormy night and the phone didn't ring. The doorbell uh, was going off and someone was rapping on the door. And I'm, I'm like 10 years old and my parents opened the door and there are two people there. I've never seen people like this. She had earrings. She was a white woman. She had earrings all like every piece of skin on her ear was pierced. The guy had facial tattoos. They were in biker clothes, biker jackets, very intimidating looking, nothing like what I bet me, me, my mom or dad had ever seen before. And they said, we just looked in the local paper. You're advertising your basement. We just got kicked out of our home. We have no money and no place to stay. And we've got children. We can't pay you the first and last, but I promise as soon as we get the money, we'll pay you the rent. Now, these people look intimidating, and I don't know if they're going to murder us in the middle of the night, right? But my mom and dad went off into the kitchen. They didn't know I was listening. And dad said, what do we do? And my mom said, Tariq, if you mean everything you have said, and at that time they were just in their 40s for these past 40 years, about taking care of your fellow human being, then give them the apartment and don't worry about the money. And they gave them the apartment and they didn't worry about the money. And those people with the tattoos and the leather jackets and 
everything, eventually paid them back and they eventually bought the home from my parents. So my point in that story is it would be so easy to be afraid, but even your generosity and your kindness and your faith in your fellow human is a demonstration of bravery. That's another way to be brave. And my father really exemplified that a lot. I cannot tell you the number of times I came home from school and furniture was gone. Maybe Intazar uncle would remember this. We'd come home, dining table is gone. What happened to the furniture? A new refugee family came. They don't have furniture. They took it. Oh, okay. It was a joke in my school. One year we went through three dining tables. Like, who, how, well, don't the refugees have other places to go? Why are they always coming here? My stereo was gone. My bedroom furniture was gone. They said, we can get more. They need help. One time, you remember the green sofas? The green sofas are gone. He said, okay, we'll buy something else. Don't worry. The new couple has moved from Pakistan. They don't have any furniture. They don't have jobs. Just give it to them. These are demonstrations of bravery as well. Uh, I had an opportunity to... Um, to attend some of the events that Tarek Patiji had addressed. And um, I really I admire his valor and his bravery. Uh, because in modern times, one doesn't need to be in a sword and go in a, in a battleground. But he was all the time, he was speaking truth. And he never hesitated even a single moment also for that. You know, you know, everyone's mind, there's a continuous process of analysis and synthesis. And ultimately, we call it, after the flood of information, what we get it, we create our own knowledge out of synthesis and analysis. I think when I listen to his words, you know, in an epic Mahabharata, there is one character. That character has watched the entire Mahabharata battleground for this 18 days. And as if this Tarek Fateji has seen the thousands, thousand years, almost a millennium with his own eyes, that feeling you can get it. And that's why the history of India, Pakistan, today's Pakistan, of course. So entire this South Asia, as if it is traversed before his eyes. So that kind of feeling and that kind of the profound knowledge he had. And uh, with that also, to have this kind of bravery, I think um, we all need to really have this one, at least if we can even in an ounce of that, it would be great. We can achieve a lot in life. And secondly, I would suggest that uh, we will gather today here at the uh, Library Foundation. Those are good words and very good ideas to, to do that. But uh, I, was, I was thinking that it really requires a lot of thought process to have something, but this legacy needs to be kept alive by some way. Uh, even if uh, I think some award to be given because there's a lot many immigrants are going to come and especially from South Asia. And uh, then let them also know that there's also one, one person from Sanatan uh, philosophy believing in that truly. Um, and he was here and uh, he has spoken such a nice words and nice advice he has given to the future generations. Thank you. Namaskar. Kem cho ji, majama. My Gujarati is so poor, so poor. Yeah, I know. Me teach you. But you, your, I, uh, I saw lots of interviews on debate of the Patejis and uh, he, I know that your mother is from Gujarat background, so that's why. Anyway, uh, my English is not good, so if I say something Hindi, please pardon me, but I want to express my feelings. So, uh, when I came to know that Monday 6 p.m., uh, here is a get gathering for remembering of respected Tariq Fata, and I have a job in afternoon shift, so I feel little weird and uh, short notice, I am not able to get a leave from my job. I am, I am an auto worker in Cambridge. But today when I uh, went to my job and I got a duty off today. So I am feel so blessed that I am able to join here. And uh, two things I remember about 
Tariq Fateji that my friend Anil Sirangi told that without Sindh, how we can dream about Hind. And second slogan I always remember that please believe in uh, or follow the Allah uh, religion, not Mullah religion. That affect me a lot. And the point is, I am from Gujarat. When the Modi ji is the Prime Minister right now, I had a chance to observe him when he was nothing. But because of the Tariq Fatah, I got mujko respect meri kya hai, wo unke dwara mujko samaj mein aai, to unka mein hamesa abari rahunga, or maybe thoda sa prayatna karta hu, I am trying ki say truth without fear. Thank you so much. Thank I you. have no words for it. I think first of all, <coughs> I feel that uh, his presence I am feeling in this hall itself. And that's one reason I, today the jacket I am wearing, my last picture with him was wearing this jacket. <laughs> that's why I am just feeling as if he was sitting next to me here today. So I think we hope we will not miss him and also we will carry forward his values. And one thought which has been coming to my mind after I met Natasha for the first time, the way she spoke, I think uh, and I pray that she should be one of the future leaders of our community and, and take, over, uh, uh, take over the journey where uh, Fatihji has left and I think she will take those values into the parliament. She should be the member of parliament very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Surinder Bhai. I, uh, I like to recognize uh, Pandit Mahindra Patel ji as well. Thank you very much, uh, Pandit sir, joining us. So, Natasha, conclusive remarks. So, uh, our dear friend, my brother, Amir, is wearing my dad's shoes. One of the crazy things my dad... My dad did everything over the top. Nothing was small with Tariq Fatah, right? So, I mistakenly showed him... I was showing him my Instagram, showing him something I wanted to buy. Then he saw Doc Martens and he got super excited. The next time I went over, he had bought five pairs of Doc Martens. Dad, what are you, you don't go anywhere. Why do you need doc, five pairs of Doc Martens? And of course, two pairs, he bought the same color. So Amir got one of the pairs. So I just want to make sure that Tariq was here. I also want to acknowledge Amir, not only for his fine footwear, but because I took my dad into hospital the night of February 27th. And at that time, within a couple of days, they told us, there's no hope. He's going. And what do I know, right? The if the doctor says it, then it must be true. I mean, I'm brown. We worship the doctors. I, please, Dr. Banjao, Dr. Banjao. I got that too as a kid from my, my daddy. So, but Amir demonstrated fearlessness in that moment. He said, no, we're not going to accept it. And even if it is dad's destiny to go, we will not go silent into that night. And Amir took on the gargantuan task of not being my blood relative, but getting access to all of dad's medical records because I just wasn't capable. There was so much happening. My mother is sick. My sister has autism. There was a lot on my shoulders and Amir lifted a very heavy weight. And I thank you for that. I thank you for that. I, I know everyone wants to wrap it up and go home. And if dad was here, he'd say, Rasmalai Nikalo, like get the desserts out. But let me talk about our sweet Rasmalai of a man here who is Intizar Zedi. Intizar Zedi has been friends with my dad for 55 years. They went to prison together in 1970. They were both skinny at the time, and had a lot more hair, and handcuffed together, and we have this wonderful photograph of the two of them in Karachi speaking the truth even then. And it is in the past decade or so that my dad was able to really express his love for India. But that would not have happened if Intazar Zedi was not there in February of 2011 to take my father to the hospital when he was first diagnosed with cancer. You saved my dad's life then. You have helped me save my mother's life. You are 
a father and a brother and a part of my soul and spirit and a part of our story. So as much as everyone is united in this, my father would not have made it without you. And I thank you for that. <laughs> on May 27th, it's a Saturday, please mark it on your calendars because I keep forgetting to tell people. I'm going to host an open house at dad's home. It will be like a full day event all afternoon. You can come in and stay for as long as short as you want. Come as you are with whoever you like, even if they're dad's enemy, just come. Just see where he was, where he lived. Let's celebrate him there. And I didn't want to do anything formal because my dad was not a formal person. He was most happy when it was relaxed and people felt at ease. So please come be at ease with us. I'll, I'll spread the information. I'll give it to you, sir. You can spread it far and wide. Tahir, uh, Tahir Bai will also have it. But I'll conclude with words from my father. At the beginning, God created the world. And the world was black and white. And then God created India. <laughs> Jay Hind Tarek Fatah Zindabad. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I like to say thank you for coming, even though it is a weekday. I appreciate giving your sympathies to Natasha, and I hope all of you all will be behind Natasha to help whatever she needs. And of course, me and my husband will do whatever we can. And don't hesitate to ask any help. Thank you for coming. Have a good evening. Thank you everyone, I appreciate a lot. It was a working day for all of you. And that shows that how much people want to hear and want to know and keep in touch with those who are contributing with us. Tariq Fateh ji, uh, I think deserved um, celebration uh, for the kind of work he did. And I feel like um, the writer always live through their work. The work itself is a great, great uh, contribution to the world. And people like Tarek are always and will always be remembered because they are always the frontline people. Um, my condolences always to the family who uh, not only shares uh, the legacy but also shares a lot of goods and bads of uh, the responses which comes across since I am also a wife of a kind of a guy I can feel that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, once again I appreciate all of you who could bring out their time and come out for this kind of uh, event which was to uh, commemorate Mr. Tarek Fateh's contribution and uh, share the grief we together are having right now. Thank you very much.